Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this video session, we'll take a look at the anatomy of vector lines and nodes. In our previous session, I customized my nodes and my handles through the options. So my node symbols may look differently than yours. Review that tutorial and then you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about because my nodes have been customized in the options in Corel Draw. When it comes to nodes and line segments, there's five basic states that apply to both of them that we want to be aware of. The nodes have three states, the line segments have two states. A node can be a cusp, smooth, or symmetrical in state, and a line can be a line or a curve. And you can work with them differently and it's not complicated. To get started, I'll select this line. Now here I've got two line segments and three nodes. If I double click on this from the pick tool, my pick tool will change to the shape tool. And we can see that in the toolbox here. If I hit the space bar, I'll go back to the pick tool. I'll come back and hover over that, double click and go to the shape tool. Now here we can see one line segment, two line segments, and then one, two, three nodes. The starting node is here and you can tell that because it looks like a cusp but it's pointing into the line. The ending node is here. You can tell that because it looks like a cusp but it's pointing out or away. So this curve is going from the left to the right. In the middle I have a cusp node. If I select that with the shape tool the control arms and handles will appear. The cusp node is different than the other nodes in that the control arms are independent of each other. You'll notice that as I move this one here on the right hand side, nothing happens with the control handle on the left hand side. They're completely independent. And this is the node that you want to work with when you have points in your curves or your shapes in Corel Draw. Beneath that we have the smooth node. If I select that, the control arms and handles will appear. Now you'll notice if I go over here to the right, to the handle for the control arm on the right, left click, hold down, and rotate that, the control arm on the left will rotate the same way. But there is one difference. If I expand or contract a control arm, it will not affect the length of the control arm on the left. So that's the smooth node. Next we have the symmetrical node. I'll left click that and you'll see the control arms appear. The symmetrical node, the control arms follow each other in rotation and in expansion and contraction. And that's the symmetrical node. They'll always expand, contract, and rotate equally both from the left and the right side. Your starting and ending nodes, unless you're dealing with a line segment, will always be in the cusp node. This is in a curve state, this line segment. So the starting and ending nodes are in the cusp state. If it's a line segment or segments in a line state, no control arms will appear there's nothing I can do with this. Now the line segment states are either a line or a curve. And I'll click off here and just come down here. I want to select this line. I'll hover over this. You'll see the icon for the shape tool change to the squiggly line. I'll click here, left click, hold down, 
you can see I can move the entire line segment around holding down my left mouse button. But I really can't do anything with this node that's in the middle and it doesn't even have a property. Now all of this you'll find up here in the properties bar as well if you're looking to identify things. For example, if I come to the cusp line here and I select that, you'll see that cusp is grayed out because it is a cusp. But I could change it to a smooth or a symmetrical node. Now we'll get into all the things here in this property bar when we get into the shape tool. You'll see the same thing with the smooth node. That's grayed out, but I can change to a cusp or a symmetrical node here in the property bar. It'll be the same thing with the symmetrical. And the same thing with the line segments. If I select this line segment, I can change it to a curve. But because it's a line, I can't change it or convert it to a line. Now down here are some line segments in the curve state. I can left click select those and start to move or bend the line segments from the curve state. So you can see how that works. So those are the three different node states and how they work and the two different line segment states and how they work. Let's scroll down and I have a graphic set up here. And once again, you can download this from the website in the work along files. But we can see here we have the starting node. This segment is in a line state. This is a cusp. We can see that when we select a node, our control arms show up on both sides of that node and on the sides of the nodes that are on the opposite sides of that node. And we'll go around and that's a curved segment there. This is a smooth node, a symmetrical node, and a curved node. This black dot shows the selection of a line segment. If a node is blue, it shows that it is the selected node or more than one node if you have a selection of multiple nodes. Once again, we have the starting point or the starting node, and then we have the end. And you will want to pay attention to the direction and the starting and ending nodes of any line segment or curve because they will affect the way in which you do your selections of nodes with the shape tool and we'll cover that in future sessions. So we'll wrap here concerning the anatomy of vector lines and nodes and we'll continue in our next video session.